Mind-controlling parasites may be more common than you think, and here's why there's a pretty good chance you may already be infected. Stay tuned. Today on Psy vs. Psy, we're continuing our seasonal foray into topics that are on the creepy side. You've seen the movies, and it's pretty wild to think that some kind of alien parasite might enter your body and take over your mind. It turns out things like this do exist in nature. There's a fungus, Ophiocordyceps unilateralis, which is also known as the zombie fungus, because it infects ants and causes them to ignore their own needs and find a spot suitable for the fungus to grow, clamp their mandibles down on the bottom of a leaf, and then in about a week the ant dies and a big fungal growth bursts out of the ant's head to release spores. Cool. <laughs> Another example is the lancet fluke, who has a relatively complicated life cycle living in multiple hosts. Adults live inside the bile ducts of cows and other grazing animals and shed eggs into their feces. Now snails come along and eat the feces and become infected, and the larvae are released into the slime produced by the snails. Ants come along and chow down on that delicious slime and become infected with the larvae. But remember, the larvae somehow need to get inside a cow, but now they're inside of an ant. So what do they do? Some of the larvae make their way up to the ant's brain, hijack its behavior to make it climb up to the very tip of a blade of grass. This way, a cow that comes grazing by and will eat the ant along with the grass. Now they're back in a cow. Come to think of it, this sounds a lot like the plot to Toy Story, but instead of toys, it's worms. Okay, so you say, well, how hard can it be to control an ant's brain? I guess that's a fair point. And even though lancet flukes can infect humans, it's rare and only usually results in inflammation, bloating, and maybe diarrhea. But there's one parasite we know of that does infect humans and does influence personality and behavior, and it's astonishingly common. Of course, I'm talking about Toxoplasma gondii, a single-celled organism that causes an infection called Toxoplasmosis, and it affects up to a third of the world's population. In some countries, infection rates top 80%. That means that if you're watching this, there's a pretty good chance that you or someone you know may already be infected with this mind-controlling parasite. So how did you get infected? That is, if you're infected, the most likely culprit is exposure to cats. Toxoplasma's primary host is cats and felines in general. And exposure to their feces, or things that have touched their feces, is a common route of exposure. Since cats poop in a box, scratch around in that box, then jump up on the counter where you prepare food, it's not hard to see why countries that keep cats as pets are more prone to high toxoplasma infection rates. Other factors like food preparation and hygiene practices make a big difference too. Before you freak out too much, let's talk about what it means to be infected. From a physical health perspective, toxoplasma infection is usually not a big deal. While you can have acute toxoplasmosis, which requires treatment, the vast majority of those infected are considered asymptomatic and probably don't even know they're infected. However, over the past decade or so, researchers have been uncovering that latent toxoplasma infection may be less asymptomatic and less harmless than we originally thought. Not because of its effects on the body, but because of its effects on your, uh, or, I mean the host's brain. Now, cats are the primary host for Toxoplasma gondii, but environmental contamination leads to many other animals becoming secondary hosts for the parasite, notably prey animals like birds and rodents. Birds and mice can become infected, and this provides a route back into the cats so the parasite can sexually reproduce. This means that Toxoplasma can better reproduce by making mice more likely to get eaten by a cat. Laboratory studies with rats and mice have shown that infected individuals are more active, slower to learn mazes, and are more likely to spend time in open or exposed places and they're less cautious of new places and experiences, all of which arguably make the animal more likely to become prey. Another study showed that while rats naturally dislike and avoid areas that smell like cat urine, toxoplasma-infected rats actually like and seek out areas that smell like cats, a surefire way to get eaten. Researchers call this the fatal attraction phenomenon. But what about people? Okay, let's look at what effects asymptomatic toxoplasma infection has on humans like you. A review of the literature suggests that there are quite a few ways that toxoplasma can influence 
human behavior. In terms of the big five factors of personality, infected individuals tend to be more extroverted and lower in conscientiousness. Additionally, infected people appear to have reduced sense of self-preservation, being less reactive in situations that make others fearful, like being alone in a forest at night. But correlation doesn't mean causation. Maybe people with these personalities are just more likely to get infected for some reason. Maybe, but if that were true, it wouldn't explain why these effects get stronger the more time has passed since the person was infected. So some have argued that this suggests the infection causes the change in personality rather than the other way around. But wait, there's more. In reaction time tests, infected humans take longer to respond, and studies show that those infected are more likely to be at risk for reaction time related accidents, such as traffic accidents. One study looked at blood samples of a bunch of people admitted to a Prague hospital after causing a motor vehicle accident, either as a driver or a pedestrian. They found that infected people were 2.65 times more likely to cause an accident than non-infected individuals. In some behaviors, there are gender differences, but toxoplasma infection has been linked to things like tidiness of clothing, suspiciousness, sociability, helping behaviors, and altruism, among others. How much of who you are is determined by parasites? Now, it can also affect how others see you. For example, a study of infected male college students revealed that they had higher testosterone and were rated as more masculine and dominant by others. They were about an inch taller than uninfected peers. Now, once again, these are correlations. After all, it's not ethical to intentionally infect people. And it could be that people with high testosterone are just more prone to all infections, not just toxoplasma. However, that doesn't explain why infection in rodent experiments results in higher testosterone as well. Yet another study reported that women who are infected are more than twice as likely to give birth to boys than girls compared to a roughly equal chance among uninfected women, a pattern also mirrored by experiments with rodents. Infection can influence how much you like or dislike the smell of urine, of cats, of tigers, and of other people. While these data have some nuance related to gender differences and hormones, it's safe to summarize these data by saying that they reveal a potential for modifying behavior to make us more likely to encounter cats in the same way that it works for mice. That is, the fatal attraction effect. In terms of mental health, it turns out toxoplasma makes a difference as well. Studies have implicated a role for toxoplasma infection in bipolar disorder, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, obsessive compulsive disorder, epilepsy, migraines, brain tumors, and more. One consequence of infection is changes in dopamine synthesis in regions around the cysts surrounding the parasites in the brain, at least in rodents. But this is consistent with a change in novelty-seeking behaviors, which are also associated with dopamine production. So what about mental disorders like schizophrenia where dopamine plays a critical role? Well, infected individuals with schizophrenia are more likely to experience certain symptoms of schizophrenia, such as delusions and hallucinations, compared to those who are not infected. The overall message here is that though it may be subtle, toxoplasma infections may impact your behavior in significant ways across many different kinds of behaviors what you like to do, who you find attractive, how risk averse you are, the kids you have, what kind of pets you like, your chances of getting in a car accident, and on and on. Now here's where it gets really wild. When we think of deadly human parasites, we tend to think about malaria. Even though we generally consider toxoplasma infection to be clinically insignificant, the sheer number of people infected, 30% of humans around the world, combines with the increased risk of accidents or other indirect problems resulting from infection. This means that it's possible that toxoplasma is even more deadly than malaria, yet it's almost totally off our radar in terms of public health problems. But there's even evidence that entire cultures may be determined in part by toxoplasma infection rates. In one study, infection rates in different countries were correlated with homicide rates in those countries. Another study connected infection rates in different countries to all kinds of interesting things like masculine sex roles, uncertainty avoidance, materialism, strict rules and structure. 
the author argues that changes in infected individuals combine and aggregate to influence not just the behavior of that individual person, but countries and cultures as well. To some extent, the dynamics of world civilization may be driven by a parasite who just wants to have sex inside of a cat. Is that so wrong? But hey, at least we don't have a fungus burst out of our heads and spray spores everywhere. In the movies, it's usually an alien that controls your brain. And if you stick around one more minute to the end of this video, I'll let you in on a little secret about aliens. If you found this video interesting, hit the like button, subscribe to get more videos on all things psychology, and until next time, keep thinking. Since that video was so scary, I thought it'd be a good idea to look at some pictures of kitties as, you know, a palate cleanser. Okay, so about aliens. Did you know there are real scientists who have devoted their careers to studying the psychology of aliens? No joke, psychologists are going to be critical for when first contact is announced. If you want to see our video on it, it's right there. Come on, click it. You know you want to. There can't really be aliens, can there? Never know if you don't click.